Thank you, Mark. Um, press the button first. There we go. If it works, there we go. So for those of you that don't know uh, or haven't heard of the Carlson Residor Group, I thought I'd give you a little bit of history, um, how the group was created, etc. Initially, Residor Hotel Group was part of SAS Airlines. Um, we opened our first hotel in Copenhagen in Denmark in 1960. Um, and over the years, um, we've obviously grown as an organisation and actually went public on the Stockholm Stock Exchange in uh, October 2006. Over the years, uh, we've built a very strong relationship with our, or a very strong partnership with our brand owner, uh, Carlson, who are based in the US, um, and that led to the rise and the emergence of Carlson Residor Group. Uh, together, we've not only been established ourselves as one of the world's leading, sorry, largest hotel companies, but we've also been recognised as the best international hotel group in 2012. About responsible business within the Carlson Residor Group, we started our green journey back in 1989 with the launch of our first environmental policy, and we called it Responsible Business, because that's what we want to be. That, that's our vision, that's one of our missions. Um, our award-winning program is fully aligned within all of our company objectives, goals, targets, business plans, etc. Uh, we focus on areas of responsibility that impact our business as well as the society that all of our hotels are based in. Uh, we aim to be trusted leaders in responsible business through our interactions with our owners, our developers, our suppliers, our partners, our guests and our employees and obviously the local communities in which we operate. We, mustn't, we must not run our business uh, to the detriment of the local community and the environment that we're in. So responsible business. It's built on three fundamental pillars. First one being Think Planet, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Think Planet in a minute, but it minimises our impact on the environment. Think People, taking care of the health and safety of our guests and our employees, and thinking together respecting social and ethical issues in the company and the communities in which we operate. So let me talk a bit about Think Planet. Think Planet is a company-wide initiative. It was launched in January 2012. And the main target of Think Planet is an energy reduction of 25% by the end of 2016 across every hotel within the group. The aim being, and that the, the measurement criteria was our energy consumption of 2011. And we're working out our reduction, not on cost, that's the one thing we can't control. We're working it out on energy per occupied room, kilowatt hours per, energy, per occupied room, and kilowatt hours per square metre of the building. So we can get some real term data, something that we can control. Hotels, every hotel has implemented procedures within their operation uh, to reduce energy consumption in their day-to-day -day business um, activities. I'm going to talk about some of those activities a little bit later. Investments in environmentally friendly technologies. You know, once you've done the low-hanging fruits, you've done your um, signage campaigns for turning off your lights when you leave your offices and so on, there comes a point when you do need to invest in technology if you have ambition to take your savings further. Dedicated training and communication campaigns for employees. When Think Planet was launched, every single employee, didn't matter what level they were, whether it was the CEO, general manager, concierge, kitchen porter, maintenance engineer, whatever, every single employee went through a rigorous training program. To raise awareness, we created some videos for the guys to watch, the good, the bad, and the indifferent of how we operate our business. Um, so every employee went through that. The, the Think Planet program is fundamental to our, in our ambition to reduce our negative impact on, on, on our local environment and the areas we work in. Um, through Think Planet, we've made four key commitments. Change. There you go. It's our ambition, it's our aim, and we will achieve this, that every single property within our organisation and within Residor Hotel Group, we have 430 plus hotels worldwide, through our partnership with Colson Residor, through Colson, sorry, we have um, just over 1,300 hotels worldwide. We aim in Residor to have every hotel eco-labelled um, by 2015. So for the UK and Ireland, that's obviously green tourism, places like the Nordics, they have the Swan label and so on. 
As I said earlier, reduce our energy consumption by 25% by the end of 2016. Uh, reduce our water uh, consumption by installing water saving devices in guest rooms, public areas, staff facilities and so on. Mark touched on that earlier. And for waste, continue to reduce the amount of waste that we produce and, and increase the percentage of waste that goes uh, for recycling. And we can do that in a number of ways, um, mainly through working in partnership with our uh, waste disposal organisations and obviously through training in terms of recycling and, and awareness. So some key Think Planet initiatives that we've carried out um, in the UK so far this year. So working in partnership with SMCC, um, we attacked our water consumption. Um, and we, we fitted in 12 hotels so far um, this year. Um, we didn't start this until um, it was May we started doing this. So 12 hotels have been um, fitted with tap aerators, shower heads, um, and we've put, fitted a, a device to the boilers that makes the flame burn hotter and reduces the amount of gas that we use. Um, so in those 12 hotels we've invested £92,000 and in real terms on the bottom line of the finance director's spreadsheet we've made savings of £169,000. And for, for us that accumulates in the last four months to just over 80,000 um, litres of water saved. And obviously every litre of water we save, if it's in a shower, we're going to save an element of gas because you, if you're saving it you don't need to heat it up. Also working in partnership with Save Money Cut Carbon and Philips, uh, we have an ambitious LED rollout program. Um, we split it into three key areas or three key phases because it's very simple to say, yeah, let's go and fit LEDs everywhere. But there are some pitfalls that, that you could easily fall into, one of which being emergency lighting, which is obviously fundamental to most of our business that, that we run. Um, you can't just plug an LED light bulb into, an, into a maintained light fitting because it just won't work on the batteries. So we, we looked at, we targeted the hotels and we looked at corridors, um, back of house areas, storerooms, areas where lamps are on 24 hours a day. And we've successfully managed to replace every one of those light fittings and lamps in 16 of our hotels to date. Um, saving, us up to, saving us just under a quarter of a million pound on the bottom line, but that equates to 3.1 million kilowatts of electricity saved in those 16 hotels. And we're working vigorously on the other 30 hotels within the UK. BMS optimizations, and the example there is Radisson Blue at Stansted Airport. That particular hotel is 500 bedrooms, 26 conference suites, a leisure club, etc. Got a very sophisticated BMS system in there that wasn't being used in, in the right way, wasn't set up in the right way. So we invested some money, some small money, as you can see there, £3,800, to look at the system, to change a few key components, and we started to optimise the way the building runs. An example being, the hotel has two 1,000 kilowatt chillers. Why are we running chillers in winter when the ambient air outside is 12 degrees, when we can turn the chiller off, keep the air and plant running, and use the, what we call free cooling, pulling the ambient air from outside, it's colder. So we turn the chillers off whenever the ambient air is below 12 degrees outside. Um, also turning off plant and equipment when it, areas of the hotel are not in use. Not every conference room is used every day, but you could frequently walk in there and see the air, the air conditioning plant running and the lights on. And that has, that has actually put on the bottom line £200,000 in, in pure saving. So the message really in, in that particular sentence is that you don't have to invest a lot to save a lot. So eco labels now. Uh, 26 of the 36 Colson Residor hotels in, in the UK uh, have been accredited with an eco label. Our target by the end of this year is to increase that to 33. Uh, so working in partnership with Green Tourism, 13 of our 14 Radisson Blue hotels have accreditation. 50%, over 50% of the park in by Radisson's um, have accreditation and the breakdown's there. Eight hotels have uh, gold, 13 hotels have silver and four have bronze. But of course, the one thing we have to remember, green tourism is, just not, is not just about energy. It's also, it's also about the work we do in our local communities, the social and charity work that we do. 
And we're, we're very proud of the things that we do within Colson Residor for our, our charity work and our local communities. Earlier this year, Colson Residor announced a partnership with Variety, the children's charity in the UK. All 36 hotels in the UK uh, have raised money for Variety and also our corporate charity, which is the World Childhood Foundation, through initiatives such as Quids for Kids. Very, very basic. Every person that checks out of the hotel, any hotel, are asked if they voluntarily wish to donate £1 to the World Childhood Foundation or the Variety Club. Since February, as you can see there, we've raised over £55,000 through um, Kids for Quids. Sorry, Quids for Kids. There you go. Oh. And, you know, and, and the best part about it is none of you realise that until I stand up. <laughs> Perhaps I should have had more Jack Daniels, but there you go. <laughs> um, in September, every hotel in Colson Residor worldwide participates in what we call ARBAN, Responsible Business Action Month. The entire group dedicate that entire month to charity work, social events, and, and uh, re revitalise the staff in terms of energy consumption. As I said, it happens every year, and so far, because we're still doing the calculations of, of the monies that we've raised, hotels in the UK raised 30k, and across uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, we've raised in excess of 200,000 pounds for various charitable organisations. Fantastic effort when you consider that it's hotel staff donating their own time, uh, their own ambitions to help and support others that may well be in need. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the hotel that I was chief engineer in before I made the step upwards. Um, I was actually chief engineer in the hotel from 2006, uh, 2006 and we were accredited to gold through GTBS in 2009. At that particular juncture in time, it made Portman only one of only nine hotels in London to be given gold. Um, which was fantastic, uh, fantastic for us. The hotel has since been reassessed in 2011 to gold and in fact has another reassessment in two weeks time. So I've already, I've already given Stuart the money. <laughs> <laughs> so the hotel itself, 272 bedrooms, the hotel runs at very high occupancy. Uh, it's a 40 year, 43 year old building. High usage levels and, and, and the building age makes it a challenge to keep everything running well. But to do so in an environmentally, environmentally friendly way is even, even more of a challenge. Energy consumption is monitored every single day by the engineering team, as well as uh, through automatic meter reading and submeters around the building, as well as making sure that there's no leaks, etc. Just some of the projects that we've done in a hotel. Um, 1200 low energy light bulbs changed. We changed them originally from the high use halogen lamps into compact fluorescence because that was the technology at the time. Now we've moved on to LEDs as part of the wider rollout. We fitted sensors to internal lights. So when you walk down a corridor of a hotel, of that hotel, the next light fitting in front of you comes on as you walk rather than it, every single light being on all day, every day. And obviously external lights, you don't want your lights on at midday in your car park, for instance. And that's led to an 85% reduction in energy consumption on lighting alone from 518,000 kilowatts per year to 77,000 kilowatts per year. And obviously that leads to a substantial energy reduction cost of 43.5k per annum based on last year's um, utility cost. We fitted multi-showers to, to every single bedroom and that resulted in an immediate reduction in water consumption of a of minimum of five litres per room per guest night. Annually this is equated to just over three million litres of water saved, which is, which is fantastic. Another project, uh, we fitted E-Cube to our fridges and freezers. Um, and basically this little gadget that's not mechanical, it's not electrical, it's just a box that the probe goes into it and it mimics the temperature of the product that's within the fridge or freezer. You can imagine, even at home, you open up your fridge or freezer, all the air rushes out, warm air rushes in, cold air comes out, but your products are still frozen. But in a, in a commercial uh, walk-in fridge or freezer, the sensors are monitoring the air temperature so the compressor runs, 
but your products are still frozen, so there's no need. And we found that with the E-Cube, instead of a compressor running 12 times an hour, it was only running eight times an hour. And that has led to an 85% energy reduction on those particular pieces of kit alone. We installed the ESS device on our gas boilers, the device I mentioned earlier that makes the gas burn at a higher temperature, therefore your, burn, your burner on your boiler doesn't run as long. Um, and that's translated in a 77.29 tonnes per annum reduction in CO2. Now that, that's only in uh, 12 hotels so far. While 77 tonnes doesn't seem a lot, 77 tonnes times 12 pound is a lot, and that should really be considered in your ROIs when you're making investment calculations, because it is a saving. We looked at replacing our chillers and our air conditioning systems that were running on R22 refrigerant, because it's banned at the end of next year. Um, and we fitted A-rated air conditioning units, A-rated chillers, and A-rated air conditioning systems. And that resulted alone in a 12% energy reduction in pure, pure kilowatt terms. But it's not all plain sailing. Um, so uh, we have challenges, and as usual, when you've got challenges, you've got opportunities. So, press the button. So challenges, controlling the cost of energy. None of us, I believe, can control the cost that, that with the money we're charged for our kilowatt or cubic meter of gas or whatever. But one thing is clear, we can control the amount of electricity, gas, water that we use. And by controlling that, um, we obviously reduce costs. Costs and owner buying in terms of investments that are needed. Once you've done your low hanging fruits and you need to invest a few more pounds, um, generally we've found that when we put ROI calculations to, to the management teams, um, you end up with uh, ROI under two years and it's pretty much signed off straight away. The challenge for us are our buildings. They range from the Portman that's 43 years old to the park in Glasgow City Centre that opened earlier this year. So you can imagine old building, not energy efficient in any shape or form, a new building that's been built energy efficient. So our opportunities. Start small, simple and inexpensive. You don't have to go out and buy a chiller that's going to cost you £150,000. Yeah? Start off with the very, very basic stuff. And one of the things that we started with was when you turn your computer off at night, have you actually turned off your monitor? A lot of people don't. They go home for the weekend and the monitor's still on all weekend. Doesn't use a lot of electricity as a, as a single device, but over time it does. Consider the ROI, as I've said. Um, we got there within three years, but generally we look at two years. Uh, I've already mentioned the cost savings. Uh, and employee engagement, that's fundamental. And we found, not only through responsible business, but through our uh, work with green tourism, that we engaged every hotel with a green committee that the general manager sits on. So effectively, the person who has the purse strings sits on that committee. There's a representative from every single department sits on that committee. They meet every six, seven weeks and they come up with new, uh, and great, new green initiatives. And generally, because Carlson Residor are so focused on reducing our negative impact, um, I don't know of any green initiative that we've turned our nose up against and, and walked away. Um, so, you know, we're doing, our, we're doing what we can and we'll continue to do what we can. We will meet our 25% target at the end of 2016. We will reduce our carbon emissions. Um, it's one of our fundamental beliefs and it, we will make it happen. So that's me finished. I'm now going to pass you back to Mark for a couple of words of wisdom. Thanks. Thank you very much.